Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. What a better way to start the day than to break down some Fortnite drama over the past couple of days. Nothing too serious, but a lot of people talking about this as a $100,000 Boom TV Fortnite tournament, bringing back OG duos. It was an amazing event. It was also an amazing, you know, announcement because people were like, whoa, all the OG duos coming back together to play on OG Fortnite for $100,000. This should be a nice, fun competition. As the duos were announced, though, some people might have thought, okay, Okay, there were some creator duos and then a lot of like really stacked pro player duos. You know, you, you got clicks, I believe, with Epic. You had Savage and Queasy. You had Mongrel and Mitro and many, many others where you're like, okay, I don't know if Cypher and Courage can go up against these guys, but let's just watch and see how this thing plays out. It turns out that it was heavily dominated by the pro players. Who would have thought? Oh, floor. Um, should I rift? I need to rift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh Wait. my god. Oh, you gotta. Oh, we're dead. Then I'm gonna know. Just let me know side here, bro, maybe. I'm not joking. I Is can't. Rift? I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead! No! That's actually annoying. This game mode is so fucking it. He's there, he's there, he's there, he's there, he's there, he's there. On the white hut, on the white hut. Yeah, he has an ADK. Yeah, I saw him, I saw him, I saw him. He just jumped out. It would be my. Go, B, two, one, go. Nice. nice, man. Nice. I feel bad. I don't. They won three games because they get gifted kills by Muzok. That is true. They got gifted kills again. But this apparently coming to the surprise to some of the competitors who were told and originally, you know, communicated by Boom TV, according to them, that this would be more of a casual tournament, you know, nothing too cutthroat and serious. And by the way, this has been an issue across multiple games now, deciding these creator teams of what should or should not be allowed. It happens often in Warzone slash Call of Duty. And again, many other games, especially for Twitch rivals, where they have to decide, okay, is it one creator, one pro player, one retired pro, and, and it was a retired pro, a creator, or still a pro player, and what's the right mix? Oftentimes, people will bend those wrong lines and bend the rules because at the end of the day you're competing for a lot of money but according to cypher pk it was originally communicated this would be a much more casual tournament than it turned out to be suna what happened with the tourney I'm guessing pretty much. uh what happened is that a bunch of content creators got invited and were told this was going to be like an og throwback you know summer skirmish vibe uh but what happened instead was that all the content creators got finessed because we invited content creators to be our teammates. And then they also happened to invite a bunch of pros that invited other pros to be their teammates. And as a result, you have like FNCS pro duos teamed up with nothing like... Like an invitation like this would have, like if there was pros in it, there they would have at least had like some sort of rule where it's like one pro, one content creator max. But no one, that a rule like that didn't even exist because the whole tournament was supposed to be just, the way it was told, the way, like think about it like this. Why do you think Dr. Disrespect is playing in this? Why do you think Summit's playing in this? Aiden, Courage AD. We were all told like this, Dr. Lupo as well. They're not competitive players. They're not even competitive zero build players, but we were all told that this was going to be like a throwback with, which was not going to be super sweaty, not going to be pros stacked on top of pros. Not going to have coaches in the fucking voice chat. <laughs> like that's what we were told. And then come the tournament, Half the teams are pro players. If we knew if it was going to be, I pr I'm telling you right now, if these, if we knew it was going to be like this, Courage already said he was, he wouldn't have played. I would have played, but I would have invited a pro to be my teammate. Dr. Suspect wouldn't have played. Dr. Lupo wouldn't have played. Ninja, you know, he wouldn't even have said he was going to play because he was going to play, but then he backed out today. A lot of these content creators would have not shown up if they knew that like, this was going to be the the tournament. So it just feels kind of shitty because we were told that it was going to be like the like you know the OG skirmishes is going to be mainly con like content creators. I expected I expected like clicks to play and like some of the, some of the pros like Booga to play. 
I expected that. I definitely expected that. But I thought maybe they would have had a rule where, like, if you're clicks, you have to play with the creator. If you're Booga, you got to play with the creator. Because that was the vibe that they were going for. And that's how they advertised this. And then it's just like... Dude, half the lobby is duo pros. At, at worst. At best, at least, you know, semi-recently retired pros with a current pro. Like, you know, like... I don't know, man. This is what prompted Courage to tweet out saying, Hello, Fortnite. I'd like to host a Fortnite OG reunion tournament where you can't compete if you've ever competed in an FNCS. You must be a content creator, must be from Chapter 1. Please give me some budget. And then Muzuk, also OG Fortnite member. Obviously, he was in the tournament competing too, probably getting cracked on by pros. Crazy after this long, uh, people still don't understand how to do community tournaments. If you want to organize a fun tournament where half the players are idiots like me and Courage, you also don't have teams of FNCS champions with coaches in chat. Also saying, LMFAO, so many pros are salty that in a tournament that was supposed to go casual OG times that the content creators decided to meme around in the final game against teams of duo FNCS pros. That final game was the true spirit of Fortnite OG. And this being that for this tournament, uh, because the pros were dominating so, so much, uh, a lot of people agreeing to go banana skin and have a little fun for the last game, which me personally watching I enjoyed, but that might not be everyone out there. Apparently, there were pro players who were fed up with this because there was money on the line. There were some other people responding on Twitter that were like, I can't imagine griefing the last game, even though most people agreed to do so. And that is what formed the Peely squad, where you just had a, a whole lobby full of bananas fighting it out. Let me see some movement. <laughs> yeah. well, that was Booga. That was Booga. There we go. Booga's dead. Dead. Sir, shut that music off. <laughs> and so at the end of the day, it, it's really not that big of a deal, in my opinion. Yes, it could have been done better. It really does d depend how this was originally communicated to everyone by Boom TV. I mean, when you see the announcement list, you're like, huh. This does seem like a, a bit of a diverse array of people, and some of these teams seem a lot better than others. But if it was communicated to the creator side, like Muse, Elk, Cypher, uh, Courage, that, hey, it's going to be laid back, then yeah, I, maybe they didn't know what to expect with other duos. But at the end of the day, with $100,000 or a lot of money on the line uh, for a team high, high placing, you're going to get people tryharding regardless. So, you know, I'm just... Yeah, hopefully do something better in the future when it comes to whether or not this is casual or competitive. But at the end of the day, money's on the line. People are going to be trying hard. So I don't know what you expect. What do you guys think about this? Till next time, take care of yourselves. Drink up water and coffee all day. All right. See you back here soon.